<clears throat> yeah, I hope uh, you are able to see my screen, sir. Can you please confirm? Yeah, I can able to see. Yeah, um, so uh, been, um, we have been discussing all the uh, input files required for this STF. So now, uh, yesterday, just I'll give you some uh, background what what we have seen yesterday. My colleague has shown you simulation results. So in this, this is the work directory, URT work directory. Uh, in this mainly uh, four folders you will find. One is the simulation stage, simulation inside here, test bench, using the test bench in instance view and XCDM, uh, he simulated the design. Then after synthesis, in the synthesis, uh, he generated using the uh, constraint file and the dot V file, uh, so verilog netlist file. So that verilog netlist file we have kept here. So uh, in the physical design stage, we are the required input file. You can see this is the netlist file. So as we discussed in our slide, so this is a UART netlist.v file. So let's open and then this one is tool generated post synthesis SDC file. So if you see how many lines also you can enable all the tools work, uh, uh, you know, uh, Linux based. So you need little interfaces, uh, text interfaces like a vim or gedit and all so you can see here this is the definition of input output declaration here and then uh, intermediate wire declaration here instantiation then this is the standard cells in our netlist file this d sdff x1 is there and d flop x1 d flop uh, s s type d flop d flop x1 x2 so there are um, more than uh, let's see if it is data once loaded into your physical design, it will find how many standard cells are not. And also this is the netlist file. I hope my friend has explained to you after synthesis, the, what are the gate level, gate timing and other information also. Uh, then SDC file. So SDC file constrains the timing related information. So let's say, okay, same form. So you are to underscore tool SDC is the output file. So this file contain this is also extracted form from synthesis. So uncertainty, you can find input delay, output delays, and then clock definition here, clock. And it is running 40 nano, um, means uh, it's 20, 0 to 20 nanoseconds and 0.4. And you can see the setup and hold uh, slack, uncertainty values to be given here and then other cells input output transition rise and fall transitions so it's a minimum required sdc file so these two inputs and then output file we have generated at least so i now let's invoke physical design where we have stopped yesterday then onwards we can pick uh, the design flow otherwise if i show you synthesis and other simulation stages and physical design uh, we we don't have the time we run out of the time so we better uh, take the design where we have start, stopped yesterday so i'm loading the design so now this is i wrote the folder inside physical design now there is no design in the memory you can see uh, this is the inverse tool uh, in the down in the down bar you will find that not in memory so there is no design in the memory so let's uh, restore the design. So, uh, if, uh, you know, when you when you are designing or any any kind of uh, means of projects and all, you can uh, save your design where you are stopping up tomorrow when you are invoking the next time, you can restore the design. The same thing I'm doing here. In OS, restore the design. So cts.inc, the file, restoring file. So if you have any warnings or errors also try to and relative synchronous path. So we are, it will uh, display. So in the terminal, so once it is loaded, uh, when you invoke the tool, it says these are the tool related. You can see 
this license is support eight CPUs. So this will be helpful. So when you go for a bigger design, let's say like a lakhs or a million, uh, if you have million number of standard cells, uh, if you use the eight CPUs with less time, you can be uh, do the placement and routing stages. Or if you go for only CPU, one CPU, it may take days. So that is advantage. You, you can see that if you have bigger design, you choose the number of CPUs supported so that you can multi-threading. This is called multi-threading or kind of a multi-task uh, so that uh, you, your tool, Inverse have the, it, itself it will partition your block and uh, assign to the different cores. You can see uh, related my system related uh, two core or four CPUs in Dell. So different cores will be take care of the different tasks. And finally, it will be add up. So this is the advantage when you go for multi-threading. Uh, number of if you have number of more standard cells or uh, bigger design, you can be uh, distribute your workload for among the CPU cores. Now, I'm when when I'm restoring, then you will find the data whether how what is the uh, if you have any errors and warnings in the previous data saved data. So you can see in the terminal it is loading the design. We have stopped at the routing stage. So the best thing, uh, if you have anything you want to see that design healthy or consistency of the file or even netlist file, SDC file or the library file, so you, you have to go through here. You will find the warnings. If you have any warnings, see there is a 976 warnings and this warnings mainly one of the implementation Verilog 958 related tech left file. So this is the left file related, need not worry about. So we can go ahead for the next step. And only we have to take, uh, consider the, if we have any errors. So you have zero errors. So we can, uh, good to go ahead. Uh, but other other warnings, if you see other warnings, it's uh, related to the technology file. We call it as an inconsistency in the technology. Sometimes what happened, when you are design loading time, it will, the tool will not get all the information until after routing and then other stages, it will get the information, then it, this warnings go, uh, go off. So it's like a, some of the stages, if it is not get the information, this will go give you warning type. So if you have cost access, like a Karen's online support access portal, then you can copy paste particular warnings, errors or information, then you will find a full details about that warning or if you have any error. So here ID, ID is very important. Any error warnings or any information. So I'm just telling this one as we are application engineer, uh, we use it to be, uh, you know, motivate all the designers to learn the self-learning, I mean, you know, technique. So basically if you are stuck somewhere, you maybe uh, look for, instead of looking for some other help, you try first, First and foremost, what is the ID type? You can copy this ID to uh, your cost access and you see the about all the information. So here in the cost access, it will show you full details about the particular either error ID or warning or information. So it will give you like a problem statement. First, it will give problem statement. Then after severity level, whether it is a serious or um, it's a, like a moderate or need not to be or you can ignore our kind of suggestions and another also column also will give solution type of solutions different solution uh, uh, recommendations like a solution one two three four five so any of the solutions you can consider those so this is how based on id you can explore particular issues and warnings so now once we load it you can see number of delay cells in our technology file inverter cells this is the clock inverters so this design, when we are doing CTS, clock tree synthesis, these uh, inverters are inferred. CLK means clock inverters, X1, INV inverters. In, so 16 are there, so this, this mean, and also buffers type, here buffers. So you may be seen yesterday, uh, when you building your clock tree synthesis, you are using buffers and inverters to uh, build your clock among entire across your 
uh, entire river in a core area. So let's say, so after this loading, if you uh, routing, so this is the routing. So let's see uh, what is the schematic view uh, in, in the tools, you will find the uh, schematic view or of the, this design. schematic view so in this schematic view you have all the paths so our st engine what it do uh, basically this is the schematic view and this is the layout view so in the here schematic only this is the wire type there is no metal layers here only cells you have cell delays available at this schematic or synthesis time so this connection interconnections are uh, after layout means after routing now you can see in all interconnections are metal layers so you have different metal layers for this uh, 90 i mean so 45 nanometer you have nine metal layers if i disable metal layers you have the standard cells so you can see i'm <coughs> sorry so these are the standard cells sitting arrangement after your placement and clock you want to see how clock it is connected to entire river cells. Let's disable all the nets and you have to enable the layers. So here, uh, uh, so in the inner walls, you have the flexibility to see the particular nets, power nets, ground net, or clock signal, or uh, power means a data signal. So this, if you are on and off visible, or you know, uh, V and S, if you are switch on and off, you can see that. So this is the clock signal and remaining all combinational circuit. And these are the sequential circuit. You can see, if you see, this is the clock, main primary clock. And this clock connected cells like uh, here, upside there is a uh, standard cells all D5 clock here, maybe. So if you select particular cell, so Q, if you select Q, with properties. So this is the SDFF flip flop and cell wet, cell height and number of terminals and what type of it is area whether it is a placed routed all those information you will find in this so this is the clock so what happens when we do the sta this path whatever we are seeing this color this entire network going to be divided pathwise like a input to output path input to my means from here to from here think my cursor okay starting point to end point that is called input to output part one side to another like a if you divide my top bottom left and right of this my block from right to left signal is goes that is called input to output path and this is the input to first register there is a this is the first register this register to the first signal here the first signal here so that is called uh, input to register type here. Okay. And another one, if you have register to register, so this is the one register and this is a, a above, you have another registered above here. So this is called register to register path. And from register to output path, so register to output path, if you have from register, this register to and this output path, so that is called register to output path. So the four paths, it is going to be divide your Clock. So now, uh, yeah, so let's, um, we will uh, enable all the signals, nets, okay, and also we'll close this uh, schematic view, we will come to the schematic view, and also you can see the design browser, here it will give total 128 cells are there, standard cells, and each cell information, you can see CTS buffers, so CTS buffers, when you are adding CTS buffer, it is there. So earlier it was not there. Before CTS, there is no CTS buffers. After CTS, clock tree synthesis only. Now particular cell, if you want to see, let's say this is a NOR gate, uh, NOR gate related uh, schematic view. You can see the particular view. So this is the schematic NOR gate. And where it is located in your layout, also it will be uh, highlighted in your layout view. Okay, so this is how we can navigate from your standard cells and you can see that. So number of nets, total total 128 standard cells, nets 152. So these two things are important when you are uh, calculating the delay. 
so these nets are earlier only the wired connections like when you are schematic it's like a line only line not metal layer but when you after this after metal layers let's say you can also see the nets uh, all the uh, only disable metal layers uh, let's say enable and only nets signal nets so these are the nets so these are nets each nets also comes with the belay right uh, means a metal layer so see this metal is connected what is this metal uh, metal layer 3 so metal layer 3 when it is traveling from this point to here it is obviously have rc components and it it, it, it add up delays values to your main standard cells so apart from standard cells you also have the net delays so this delays need to be verified whether if it is let's say i want my timing constraint is 40 nanoseconds from input to output so this is the input here from input to output if i are able to reach my all the signals less than 40 nanometer that means i have successfully uh, closed my timing otherwise i need to be worried which path it is not uh, coming less than 40 nano uh, 40 nanometer sorry nano seconds that path we have to be manually there are two ways to be see the uh, means fix the set violations of that particular path first and foremost thing what type of path it is we have to be check it out so let's come to after routing you can see down top down there is a routed status so my design routed at this time yeah so in the routing stage now i'm going to be verified after so we have started all the way from design loaded and earlier floor plan done power plan and then seat placement ecu means as a clock tree synthesis after clock tree synthesis i want to show you what in all the clock all I means clock is almost reaching to all the uh, cells earlier earlier it might be not equal line before cts after cts this is the source source clock source and this is the sync pins so total you have here uh, four seven eight uh, ten fourteen four, 14 sequential cells now getting the rising edge of the clock almost equal time now clock has a built in a such way that each and every register in your area or uh, your core area reaching your rising edge of the clock so that it will be uh, means your data will be processed from input to output so now we are making sure that our clock tree is done and the routing also done routing also you can check it out after post routing this is the nano route routing happens three stages one is the uh, global routing and then special routing and nano routing so global routing done when you are power planning and special routing also done this is the nano routing after nano routing you can see this nano routing related fixing antenna everything happens and then things cleared then after the routing stage later now time for um, timing verification so here the option timing check the timing report so now it is the we have been testing see normally uh, timing can be verified different stages like a design stages pre pre placement time post placement time or pre cts time post cts time or post route time and sign off stage so now where we are now we are at routing stage so you select the routing post route and then what type of analysis you want set up or hold time let's go for set directory name timing report it will going to be stored in the timing report folder and this setup violations now click on it so once you routing just checking 
setup violations. So we can close this. Yeah. So here setup violations are zero. So we can see violating paths are zero. And the all the paths are total 46 paths are there. And we are worried about register to register path. So 24 register to register path, all paths are met properly. So no worry about setup violations after routing. And you can see setup worst case analysis. We are taking worst case, best case. So these are two cases. So worst case means I have considering my URT design can run a minus degrees also and room temperature also and any any of the temperature PVT conditions. So this one, it's all paths are 46 paths total paths are and every all, all the paths are passing and worst there is no uh, total negative negative value of TNS and WNS. And here there is a one worry here. There is a max capacitance value have a negative and it has a um, negative, but this is the command related to the uh, DRV design um, verification related. Okay, so these things we can so total number of glitch violations zero and then uh, it is reported everything is stored in the time reports. Now also you can go to your work directory. So this is your work directory we have been and timing report is the report here it is saved URT post route setup so this one uh, this is the report it has generated now okay now so setup is we are fine with the setup violations now next click for old violations old violations post route select post route now old violations and number of paths let's consider as many as 50 I'm giving default. Okay, you can now click on OK. So it is saying that if you want to get the old violations, the post route, so error, it is showing again error comes with the ID. So this ID sometimes equivalent ID uh, when you are in the uh, online, it will be paste. It means that this uh, so solution also it will comes with in the terminal. So what it is saying that on chip variation OCV you need to be uh, turned to be off. So this command you need to be right. Set analysis mode analysis type on chip variation. And then you need one switch here. CPP R. So this switch you want to see the hold violations, you need to uh, set this one, uh, one, one mode, setup analysis mode as a CPPR both. Now it is a on chip variation mode, it is changed. Now let's again rerun for hold violations. Report, post route, go for hold violations, and then run. So let's see. There is a one violation. You can see old violation, and then old violation path is one, one path, and all out of 24 paths, and one path that to register to register path. So we need to fix this one. So old violations to fix this one, there are two ways. One is the automatic. That means like a uh, default means in the tool there is a interactive automatic. Uh, uh, I mean. Um, the tool will give optimize or reroute that path. So you take the advantage of inbuilt uh, tool feature. Do this tool advantage, how it is going to be resolved that path, old path. And then next one manually. Manually time, we have to go for tempus. So now let's see how it is that path look like debug. We can go for debug the timing. And setup is need not worry because I'm just running the setup also here. You will find bar chart of um, we have a uh, uh, couple of minutes back. We have seen the slide how it is look like the bar chart for timing path. The same thing it will be reflect reflect here. 
Okay, so it's a uh, fair to okay. Let's go for this whole path only report uh, debug and this one hold type generate hold type. So here this is the interface for see the paths. Now the green color all the paths are passing. So you can see here total 24 paths and, and uh, failing paths, but there is one negative slack is here. So negative slack point minus point zero zero zero. So it is a same achieving this zero slack, but it is not considered, but it is not reported here fail, for fa failing path. So if you have failed path, red color will come. Let's assume that we can also avoid this path. Let's say this minus zero zero. If you double click on it, what is the path inside? You can see that. So this is the schematic diagram of that path. In this path, you have combination logic here and the D flip flop here. So you have AO cells and then clock inverter cell and clock buffer cell and D flip flop. Total four, um, uh, four type of cells in your data path. Same thing here. D flip flop. It is taking point one to seven delay, and A O cell point zero three nine second nine nine nanoseconds, and clock inverter X one point zero zero nine second, and the D flip flop X one zero very less here. So all together, it's coming point seven five uh, nanoseconds. So if you see, this is the uncertainty value and the positive capture. Everything is data delay. Color coding also it will show that. So also launch clock. What is the launch clock time and capture clock values of that one and path. This is the SDC constraint path. So when we are loading this SDC file, so these are the constraints file it is considered. And then timing interpretation. So what is the fan in and fan out connections? Whether you have the clock gating or any HVT cells or low VT cells, or is there any buffer level shifters? Are there any? So is the path structure related? All the information interfaces things here. here. So like you have all the paths, total 24 paths, you can see the each and every path. So different different paths, schematic diagrams you can see. This is the 24th, and so this one is other. Uh, 15th path schematic this in this path this is the world checks register to registered pass it's just positive slack only there is nothing to worry and here this is also positive slack in this path 13 path number 13 and then like each path we can analyze the delay let's say like how do we resolve the negative uh, minus negative slack path so let's go back to the path. So here, this is the path. You can see the minus 0 0.00. Double click on that. We have to see the what type of cells it is. You have D flip flop, which is consuming more delay. 0 0.02127. 0 0.02127. 0 0.02127. And then other cells are less delay. So what is the thing we have seen during our presentation time? World violations. Whenever you have the world violations, you you have to be re, uh, downsize this right so if you recollect our presentation so let me show you that um, Yeah, I'm just um, want to show you what what was the what is the yeah so to fix the timing value so red color is the so this so this color if violated paths comes so let's say we have all the green paths and.
and then red color all this red color related these things are uh, violated paths and number of violated paths also it will be show so now um, here set up and hold checks so if it is negative slack so this is the negative slack these are the cells we are analyzing so particular in our here in this slide uh, it nor gate negative slack negative more delay or so in our case we have different cell so we have old violation that time downsizing the cells we we need to downsize the particular cell so so let's come out from this and now this is the hold you can see the path related hold type so uh, if you double click on path related information every uh, information it will Okay, let's close. Um, so in it related that path information, detail information, we can see, then we can realize that, okay, here it is. Um, uh, we can negative path related, yeah, it is. Yeah. So you can see when I click on this, you will see in the net what type of that path it is. So this is the path. So I disabled all. So this path, between this path, you have negative slack. So how do we minimize or downsize the particulars? I, you have to down, downsize either this cell or this or any of these cells in four. Here in this path, there are four different standard cells. You can see down here. Here D, D, when I select the D, so here uh, d related path in this path uh, you have to be point one to seven it is taking more delay so you can if it is downsize x1 is the down value so you can't go for downsizing this cell still so one other cells if you see d x1 this is a oh, dff rx1 clock inverter rx vx1 or you can go for this one aio Let's say um, we will select one cell and see that change the cell. Okay, you can see this one. It is a manually changing. So we are changing manually from the X1 to XL or X1 to X4 and all. Instead of that, let's say tool will be resolve its path. It's, so let's, uh, we will take how it is resolved. So now we are, let's uh, enable all the nets, okay. I want to be resolved that whole path, then we'll take the inbuilt optimization, click on the op optimized design, post route, select the post route type, hold. So what will happen when I'm selecting this one, your routing engine, placement and routing engine reroute that path to avoid this old violations. So I'm selecting post route, hold, and then max capacitance also, okay? And also you can keep it both set up and hold violations. And then let's see if hold and set up violations after post route, and then I'm taking advantage of inbuilt so that it will be re already it is placed placement and routing done but i am re when i am go for rerouting or placing for this one so it will be find out another placement and it will be decrease the path so that it will be meet the timing for setup and hold then click on the run so inside you, see, you can see in the background tool is trying to do the iteration process so you have we have to be consider iteration process here number of iterations based on iterations only we will come up with the best version or fine tune version so basically at this stage you need a lot of iterations or uh, what type of uh, path it is you need to be corrected that path and then re so different iterations you need to check the trace it out whether you have 
uh, decreasing or increasing the particular so this is auto uh, apr means automatic place and routing engine itself taking very less time to be reroute entire your logic and it will come up with the solution so this is a uh, one solution other one is we'll see the manual fixing yeah if you see the log files you will find all uh, uh, iterations it re i'll show you that it is extracted yeah so you can see rerouting that different wire lengths here also one type one iteration here you can meter wire length then second iteration it is a 25 uh, thousand 2564 so you can see the wiring like a uh, like it is each and every iteration it is trying to be optimizing the interconnections between this so around like a based on its calculations maybe it may be go uh, even 100 iterations also some bigger designs it takes days for to uh, re I means uh, iterations and all so that's why um, bigger designs it takes uh, if you changes anything and you want to see the impact of that changes you need to be wait for more time of course if you have multi core support uh, you can have less time within hours you can get the your uh, reports so now uh, all your setup handle this is the setup violations earlier you have setup related max capacitance issue now it is resolved and hold also you have one hold violations earlier one path it is now resolved okay setup and hold resolved with the help of the automatic place and routing what is the difference between the earlier version this version you can see density is changes earlier maybe less density less less okay after this resolved this issue you have density is 70.130 before that what was the when you have the work issues let's see what is the density it must be less than that value let's see okay yeah you can see here 70 when you have the issues max capacitance issue when you have that you have 70.0054 so it is increase the density it means it is a trying to be uh, align the buffers inverters so that it will be um, resolved that path so the tool it has its uh, freedom to be analyzed or required if any buffers are errors required so it is a point 130 increased from 0 0.050 onwards so and also now let's see that path if you see the path then it should be it should not contain any negative um yeah it is need to be update let's update old violations now you can see there is no negative slack it is resolved here and also if you see that path particular path you will find that path related uh, all the like a, in that path there there will not be any it's not going to be any uh, more delays so we can also see that in that path delays cells wise Yeah. So, uh, likewise, you can resolve any uh, if you have tool will help some extent. After that, it may not able to help. Then we have to manually fix that path. Now, this is one way taking advantage of the inbuilt uh, on chip variation. So, this is called uh, sorry ECO engineering change order. So, if you see that this is the ECO engineering change order optimizing design. There is another way interactive ECO. So when you have the interactive ECO, so let's we have to take this is already resolved issue means in this um, layout setup and hold time resolved. Now it is there is no issues 
in this design. So we can save this layout and we'll take the whatever that earlier issue contain that design. Okay, we'll, we'll come up. I think. So we will take the database, routed database, which have the old violations. Then we'll try to be change the um, downsizing the cells. So let's come to uh, this that earlier we have worked on CMR I mean, so folder. Now this one is issues related, I means so old violation database. Let's invoke the tool once again and load the design. So what happens here when you are want to resolve uh, means uh, manually or fixing these timing violations, the two two tools parallelly will work. One is the temp, uh, inverse already and then parallelly tempers. So you are fixing this timing related in the tempers and you will coming back to the inverse. So basically when I'm doing this all timing analysis, background tempers engineering only, it is working. So there is uh, nothing different when I'm accessing any timing difference. Everything is the inverse is accessing campus only. But there is a two ways you can also open tempus standalone instead of through the inverse. So we are going to do that one now. We are invoking the tempus standalone and uh, loading entire database then we will fix that old violations. Normally it will not take that much time to be invoke the tool. It depends on RAM. So if you have minimum 8 GB RAM, then your tool immediately invoke. So, Mine says 4 GB RAM, that's why it is a little bit slow. Yeah, in this in this uh, routed design, so we have, let's say it's invoking. So, so let's reload the design again with the routed. So we have to reroute, I mean, see this. And then warnings. Let's see in the terminal. It's loading. It's loaded. Okay. Now, so particular path. Uh, let's uh, let's also check the report. Hold path. Post route. Hold. So now you have the violation of one path. So that violation path, let's say you that if you have that violation path also, you can view the 3D. See, let's disable particularly if you have this particular area, you have the violations. So inverse will give you 3D view. So you can select this and based on selected net. So if you see the metal layer, how it is like a 3D view of the connections standard cells. So we can see the particular metal layer, how it is connected. And these are the selected wires and the standard cells between the interconnections. So this will basically helpful when you have the DRC violations or if you want to see the 3D view of your metal layer connection and between the standard cells and visualizing with the different color. This is the metal three, metal four, and if you are uh, down and if you see switches like 3D, you can visualize in between also, you can change this. Yeah. Um, so now to interact to, so we have to save this design. First one, what you have to do, save, um, save the design.
underscore hold underscore route hold issue is there so then e n c and saving the hold means that while hold violation related database in the invert and okay so let's where you want to save this one let's go dbs inside dbs issues okay in dbs hold Okay. TNC. So it will save your netlist file, SDC file. Then after we have inputs. So if extract RC, RC file extract. So then save your SCF and default RC. So this is two you are extracting in the same work folder. So when you give this one, it will be generate you are as spec file it will generate so now we can see here uh, spec file generated and also it is in the local uh, work directory you can see uh, this is the spec file it's generated you know what invoice will generate this spec file automatically after routing so it's all related uh, resistor and capacitance values of each and every net and the standard cells then we need one more sdf file so SDF file, you can write SDF file, select SDF file, and then ideal clock, and this this also active. So we can take the worst case, active SDF. You are SDF file, it generate. So yeah. So we have database ready with the whole violation database ready for invoke the tempers. So invoke in, instead of Earlier, we have optimized the design with the you know, tempers from here, ECO tempers. But now, this time, we keep this side, invoice minimize, and we will invoke the tempers here as a standalone tempers. Tempus, uh, sign off it's a pso we can use the keyword also tempus sign off yeah it's taking time in meantime you can see the reports also here uh, after routing stored in the dbs so this is the routed data from here your netlist dot v file also be saved here so uh, here it is dot v file so library information here and then um, clock tree synthesis and you are tcl file yeah so you can see you are a routed design dot v file if it is yeah yeah temper set to be open okay if you are also manually also it can be uh, invoked like a means you can extract the save file netlist so urt dot Routed underscore routed. The key is e underscore routed. So this is the routing after routing dot v file netlist file. So all the files ready to invoke standalone timing sign off solutions. Yeah, meantime, our tool is loading. So if you have any questions, uh, we can discuss. Okay. There, what is the message? Do you have any more queries? Just I can ask. Yeah, whenever these two tools parallelly work, obviously load increase on your CPU. So it takes little time and then we have to slowly walk. 
yeah fine now uh, tempus uh, invoked and there is no design inside now we are loading that routed design from invoice the database we have saved this database and we are loading into here so uh, there is a various ways like you can read the design one by one and you can instead of uh, i can use that terminal based so you can see a read underscore design and then physical design physical data and double dot dbs the path we have to give I have saved in path, then you are at old routed dot, then you are at top level name you have to give. Okay. If you give this all um, uh, dot v file and sdc file, all uh, timing related, all information data, you'll, you'll, it will be load. Now you can see. It reading all the even inverse data, which which have the like a um, hold violation data. Yeah. So here, as we said, right, tempus will work with the timing path. This is the schematic, and if you want to see the layout, you can see the same layout of inverse. In Tempus itself, uh, layout also view of the same layout of your. So this is a like a hand in hand. The Tempus and Voltus will work in the same interfaces. Here also same interface ECO is there, clock related timing and signal integrity, verifying design connectivity, other views and all. Same thing of there. So now here we have to do next one. So now we can enable all the design. Now first what, what you have to do? Uh, read the SDC file. So SDC file it is in the directory reading. So after SDC file reading in Tempus, it is successfully read SDC file. So then uh, now we'll see the spec file. So we, you will see the interesting here. Once you read the spec file, you will see the resistance and the capacitance values of your metal layers. So once you complete it, you can see the spec is rated and how much it is. Spec is contain number of resistors 2,408 and ground capacitance 2,528. Coupling capacitance 508. So this it is extracted from the spec spec file. These values. And next one, SDF file. So SDF file also generated from Inos. That same thing loading here. These all files are required when you want to be in detail. So in simple terms, in simple terms we call it as in Tempus, it will give in detail report, in detail report up of each and every path. Sometimes some of the violations it may miss out in the Inos, but it will be reflect in the Tempus. Tempus basically in in detailed timing analysis engine. But in the Inovos also you have timing engine, timing analysis engine, but it will give you oral, oral analysis and oral results. It may not, sometimes it will miss out some of the paths, but in the Tempus it will each and every path in detail, it will go and give the report. So now all things are loaded. Now it's time to see the uh, timing report, okay. Uh, debug timing, okay. So, same interface, we are invoking hold violations. Yeah, see, earlier it was not shown these paths. How many paths? It is showing 13 failing paths. When you see the same interface in inverse, only it's shown the one path and that path 
resolved with the autom automatic place and routing engine inbuilt. But now when you come to here in detail, so if you click, these are the paths in detail, 13 paths, which are failing paths. So if you see this path schematic, this path failing, you can see old and negative slack here. After you see, you can also go, this all paths are failing. So red color is the negative slack. You can see negative slack here. Red color is the uh, symbol itself. You need to be serious about these paths. You need to consider this path uh, to be resolved these paths. So one path will try to be uh, see that uh, resolved. Then it may take time to resolve all the paths, but I'll show you one path and remaining. They do a lot of iterations and each and every iteration they do a small, small task and they'll try to be build the database. OK, so let's say I want to resolve this path uh, here, which are taking more slack. OK, this path taking more slack. So first first path. Minus how much minus. One point minus point five four negative slack it is there. So in that path, you have uh, we have three cells, AO cell, clock buffers, and D5 flop. So this path, in this path, you have AO cell. It, it is taking 0 0.11, 0.11 delay. So this delay, and this is the old type. So we can uh, try to be, uh, if we want to uh, resolve this old fixing, what you have to do, do downsize either this cell or any of the cell you have to choose. In this path, if I decrease this delay, then it will be resolved. Maybe this will decrease 0 0.5420 or some values to be decreased. So what you have to do, select this. Uh, when you are selecting this particular cell, also you can uh, in the type uh, Tempus select instant. So I'm selecting in instant. So instantiation name or instance means standard cells. So it is a G copy the cell. I'm copying the cell type AO cell type. So so it is selected. When you are selected in Tempus, it says so. This is the cell I'm doing resizing, downsizing in your entire schematic. So this path this path failing. So from here to this path, I'm downsizing this cell so that this timing will be met. So then, um, yeah, once it is selected, then you can go here, interactive, change the cell. Yeah, I'm sorry. Got to call. So you can see uh, when you are select this changing the cell. So here downsize. You just select the downsize the cell. You have upsize downsize. Otherwise, you can also specify. Let's say X1 is there. And if you down, there is a XL is there. X, X1 less than XL is there. You can select XL. So when you are XL, it will be decrease the delay. May uh, if you are now presently X1 is the uh, present a drive strength of this AO cell, it, it has the delay of 0 0.31. So if we go for sizing means Excel. So select Excel, either you have browse here or you can also just simply select the downsize. When you are selecting this cell in your layout also, in the layout also you can see the layout cell, the path also it will show and the cell also it will show. And then selecting and downsizing then you can also save this data. So you have to be interface this one to inverse. So you, you need to give this one ECO down size dot TCL. We are downsizing that and writing in a output as a TCL file. So now we'll come apply, downsize apply. Once you give apply, then in your Tempus terminal, it is now downsized. You can see here resized your cell from 
x1 to xl so it's a ao x1 to xl it is downsized and the same thing it is a saved as a eco downsize so in your walk directory so let's come to your walk directory here it is a written one file name eco um yeah where it is hold yeah okay so now it, it has a uh, written eco and then then save that file to uh, we have to communicate the same details to our uh, inverse tool so that it will be uh, resolved that or uh, downsize that cell so yeah so once this downsize and save in the here it is here eco underscore downsize so this file you can come to your inverse in inverse you can come to inverse now you can source that source eco i'm fixing that downsizing this in the tempus and stored in this tcl which is communicating back to the inverse now you can see um okay here it is a o it is mode we have to change the mode of okay timing report post graph we have to size the means uh, the path i mean this switches has to be turned off for on chip variation then it will be considered cpp okay now rerun that source eco now you can see it is a rerouted with the downsizing now in inverse it is taken impact x1 gone to xl okay now we will verify that path whether if any path now you can see that same and uh, now presently it is a 175 required time point minus point 054 is the value minus lakh value and inside you have d5 flop i means ao cell of tubal 1 now re uh, rerun this uh, means uh, rerun this report and see that what are the changes made in that path and let's reload now you can see it is earlier 54 now it is decreased to 52 and if you see uh, this has a it has changed okay where it is path yeah eo cell you can see the schematic and wherever eo cell yeah it is this is the path i think now it is gone path 12 so in the path 12 so a o cell now we can see here um okay this yes in this when we gone it is upsized it's a opposite happened so you can see excel it's a large 140 earlier one triple one now it is increased so it is so now instead of that what you can do select here change the cell up size you can just select this and apply let's see and re save the design okay now rerun once again the timing report so we have to iterate this process so that you will be to see that particular okay it is second path now um, it is again it came to x1 you can still it can be downsize okay 
so it is saying that maximum this is the in the technology file this is technology files downsizing is the x1 is the lowest and after, you can't work on this cell either you can do for this one uh, another next cell so if you change this cell g71 so you can down i mean sir downsize let's say downsize and apply and once you've done this and you can see clock x12 it is gone excel again this is also lowest version of this standard cells and then um, re rerun timing path yeah so yeah when you see this this is the path earlier you have inverter so inverter clock inverter with the uh, 009 now it is changing to less value it should be so here in this path each and every path you need to be analyzed what are the low drive and high drive cells and you have to replace so that it will be delay decrease and increase and then you have to rewrite your all your changes in this eco file like this so now i have only resized one cell so it is if you open this there are one cell downsize another cell upsize likewise if if you to resolve this 13 paths you need to be uh, means more than 100 paths i show you one design where you will find this uh, timing cells we are resized it takes a lot of effort here to see each and every cell delay and come up whether you want to be i only change the cell there is also add repeaters you required this is the this is the techniques uh, you have apart from this technique changing cells you can also add repeater or delete repeater or you can also if you just if you click on this you you have the interactive add repeater add instances or you have add some other extra cells changing that are existed repeaters you can delete so four or five techniques you can work on and the same thing you have to be uh, send it back to the inverse tool so inverse tool again you have to check the timing report and then going back to tempus in tempus you have to modify or edit or change changes you make it whatever the changes then you rewrite tcl file and uh, recommunicate to the uh, inverse tool so like a there is a circle like between the inverse data you will go to the uh, in tempus tempus will changes made and the tempus will give output data to the inverse again and inverse test it and then it will go back so this kind of uh, iterations required for this all the paths to be verified i hope uh, this is the uh, flow for this tempus using uh, sta timing analysis so we, uh, i have done a session for uh, this uh, first off if you have any questions, uh, we can have the discussion. Sir, over to you. Uh, yes, sir, over to you. Yes, there are participants who so they have any worries uh, in the Tempest tool? Are there any, any more doubts regarding the Tempest tool or the problem with your the design? Any, any kind of sort of doubts? So we can clarify with you. So yeah. feel free. I hope uh, so. The participants so understood that the flow, whatever he has given as of now. Still, do you have any more queries we can ask now? Yes, sir. If, if they don't have any questions, we can wind up the session. We can meet after. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I hope uh, there is no more queries now.
So now there's a time to go for the lunch break. So just to, we'll take a lunch break and we'll come back at uh, so two o'clock, sir. Yes, sir. Two o'clock. Yeah. Okay, so we'll come back at uh, 2 p.m. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for your patience. See you in the afternoon.